Buongiorno, students. Welcome to Venice, Italy. Now, if you're actually Italian, it's not called Venice. It's called Venezia. So, buongiorno a Venezia. And we have the canals with the people in the gondolas. But they don't do that for free. After a gondola ride, you have to pay for it. You open up your wallet. You know, you're American. You have U.S. dollars. You're like, thank you for your services, ma'am. Beautiful voice. Thank you. And then she's like, mm, U.S. dollars, no. Euro. And you're like, Euro? I am in Europe. She's like, no, 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 no. The currency, Euro. And you say to yourself, oh, okay. I'm not in America anymore. I need to exchange my dollars for Euros. Now, because it's a different country, when you go to do that transaction at a bank, they're going to charge you a foreign transaction fee. Now, that foreign transaction fee is typically about 3% of the value of the currency. You say to yourself, uh, I don't know if I want to pay 3%. Maybe I'll just go to an ATM, sometimes called a cash point overseas. So you go to a cash point, you put in your ATM card, and you type in your PIN number. And it says, this is a non-affiliate banking ATM. There will be a five euro surcharge. And I'm like, what? There's a fee for taking my own money out of my bank account just because I'm in a different country? And the answer is yes, there is. And then you say, oh, okay, so I'll, I'll take out, I owe the gondola 40 euros. So you type in 40, you press enter. And then all of a sudden it says, you have gone below zero dollars in your bank account. And you're like, oh no, I forgot to load money and to deposit money into my bank account. Well, I need the money right now, so I'll just press OK. When you go below zero on your banking account, there's another fee attached to that. It's called an overdraft fee or an insufficient funds fee. And then you're like, OK, fine. I'll just write a check. So <laughs> you get out your paper check. You dust it off. You haven't used it in a while. You're like, right, what's your name? Can you gondola for the gondola? You sign 40 euros. You tear the check and hand it to her, and she's like, oh, Americans. This is so bad. But when she goes to cash that check at her local bank in Venezia, there's actually going to be a returned check fee because you don't have enough money in your bank account. So I keep saying this word, fee. Fee, fee, fee. There are so many different types of banking fees, and you run into them, particularly when you don't have enough money in your bank account or you're traveling overseas and you have to pay for things in foreign currency. So we're going to go back to the classroom, sadly leave Venice, Italy. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world. And we're going to leave and we're going to go investigate all of these different types of fees because once you know what they are, you can avoid them because paying fees is just money leaving your pocketbook for no reason. So let's focus on avoiding fees by learning all about them. Oh, students, how was I to know that going to Venice, Italy was going to be so expensive? Not just like eating pasta and Riding on a gondola expensive, but like banking fees expensive. There were so many fees that I got hit with for not having enough money in my bank account or exchanging foreign currency or having a returned check. There's so many fees in banking that you need to be aware of so you can avoid those fees. Because fees, again, that's just money flying out of your pocket that, that do nothing to help you. So. Let's uh, figure out a way to avoid every single one of these fees. So down here, I'm going to mention all the different fees there are, and then I'm going to give you ideas on how to avoid those fees. So a returned check fee, typically $25. What is the remedy for this? All right, over here. Remedy. Um, to write checks for which you have money in your bank account. So have sufficient funds when you write a check. Ah, and 
on to the next one. Insufficient funds, which is sometimes called NSF. Insufficient funds. Well, again, just have sufficient funds because if you're transferring money, it doesn't have to be by a check, but if you like do a, an app-based transfer or um, if you send somebody a text message and you send somebody some cash and it's connected to your bank account but you don't have enough money in there, you'll have an insufficient funds fee. All right, so I'm just going to write quotation marks here because have sufficient funds will, will help with that. A monthly service charge. Yes. Whew. Banks will charge you $15 just for the pleasure of having a bank account number with them. But they offer some ways to remedy this. The easiest one is to have a minimum balance or direct deposits from work. So if your paychecks from work are always being sent directly to your bank, typically they'll waive this $15 fee, which is good because over a year, $15 is $180. You don't want to pay a bank $180 for basically just saying, sure, you can bank here. You want to keep that money. So make sure your direct deposits are, are being sent directly to your bank or maintain the minimum balance that they require. And that minimum balance changes bank to bank, but it can be as high as $1,500. So it's much easier just to have direct deposits. Using a non-affiliate ATM. So I'm making up two banks here, but if um, I am a, a customer of Sunrise Bank, but not a member of Sunset Bank, and I try and use a Sunset Bank ATM, I'll still be able to pull cash out, but I'll get hit with a $5 fee. So the easiest way to do this is to use your own bank's ATM. Overdraft, right? So this is pretty similar to insufficient funds. You have a debit card, and the debit card is connected to your bank account. It's one that you can swipe at stores or put with a chip and pin and put in your pin number so that you can buy things. And if you go beyond the amount in which you have available in your account, you'll get hit with a $35 overdraft fee. But there's something that you can do here, which is really cool. A lot of banks offer you the option to decline coverage, which I always decline the coverage. What this means is that if I don't have the money, I want the bank to automatically tell whoever I'm buying the product from to say, hey, this person doesn't have any money. Don't let them buy this. Your card will get declined. Now that's a great thing. Although it doesn't feel very good for someone to hand you back a piece of plastic and say, I'm sorry, sir or ma'am, your card was declined. For me, that's better than paying a $35 fee. Because if I'm not aware of what my banking balance is and I accidentally overdraft, I want that to just my card just to get declined. So that's the best way to avoid, for me, that $35 fee. You could also just have sufficient funds, but this is a different way to do it. Printed statements are sometimes an extra fee. I know having the feeling of paper is empowering in your hands, but almost everything is digital now. So yes, you could pay the money to have printed statements, but you could also just have electronic delivery. Electronic delivery, meaning that they're sent to your email address, a link, and then you click the link, type in your, your username and password, and then you can see your electronic statements. All right, that'll eliminate that $4 fee. Finally, foreign exchange, 3%. So for every $100 that you pull out, you'll owe a $3 fee. So that $3 um, is avoidable if we use a no foreign exchange fee card. All right, so you, sometimes debit cards have no foreign exchange fee, and sometimes credit cards don't have a foreign exchange fee, but that's a way to avoid that. Look for um, cards that have no foreign exchange fee. So my trip to Italy was unfortunately cut short because I ran out of money and was hit with a whole boatload of fees, but hopefully now you understand how to avoid them. Arrivederci, I believe is how they say goodbye in Italy.